Martin Teto could not join us today and instead has sent his colleague, um, Mr. Siabonga Kola. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning, and to listeners. Uh, Minister, just tell us the significance of this day and why it's so important to commemorate this day every year. Uh, it is very important because it is a day where we remember the struggles of our youth in our own liberation. As you remember, not only in 1976, but 1976 was a turning point in the youth struggles. It soon spread all over the country. We saw a lot of our youth leaving this country and going to join the armed struggles abroad, which eventually resulted in our liberation. It is for that reason that the youth of today, much as they don't face the same problems which they faced in 1976, must be in the forefront. They must be able to move us forward in the challenges which are currently facing our youth, particularly the challenge of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. So it is in that respect that we call for partnership with our youth organization across the political spectrum to engage government actively at all levels of government, at a local level, at a provincial level, and at a national level, as we have seen with the launch of the presidential working group on youth, where our youth actively engage the head of state influencing the policies of government, which eventually allocate the resources so that we can prioritize youth matters. What is key to the youth of today is that they must participate in the economic emancipation of our nation. They must participate in the efforts to create job and entrepreneurship. That's why as the government, we are spending a lot of money. Education is our priority number one. Uh, if we see the enrollment at uh, TVET colleges and uh, uh, at the universities has increased tremendously over the last six years, Nine, over 90 percent increase in enrollment because government is assisting the poor students and the students are responding positively and taking these opportunities. We are also engaging the business to ensure that they absorb the youth so that they can get the necessary experience, so that they can be employable or start their own businesses. That's why we're putting those incentives. So in short, we know the challenges which are currently facing. We're saying to our youth, they must avoid the derailment, derailment of their struggle. You know, things like teenage pregnancy, alcohol abuse, and say no to drugs like Nyaupe, which are killing our youth today. It must be the youth who take up the spear and fight these ills and lead the campaigns at the community level so that we can move, the, our youth can move South Africa forward. And uh, maybe some other argument would be that the youth of 1976 or the youth of um, pre-our democracy had a common goal, there was a common vision and there was a common enemy. And um, today doesn't seem to be that collective sense where there's unity around, let's say for instance, um, the economic emancipation of every young South African. Yes, the enemy then was a racist government. Now we've got a democratic government. It's not our enemy, it's our partner it's, uh, for the youth people to emancipate themselves. The enemy which we're facing today is, uh, is poverty, is unemployment, is inequality. Those are the enemies we must fight. Those are, those are the enemies we must fight and ensure that our youth can participate effectively in the economy. Those are the things where the youth is our future leaders. We cannot really afford such high levels of unemployment. That's why we have to find more ways of ensuring that our youth are absorbed in productive activities in society. That's why today the president will be having those role play uh, models from their youth. They'll be joining president on the stage. That's why today students who are coming from poor communities in the rural areas who are being trained to, and given the skills through NAFSEC will be parading here today to showcase that youth can participate. President Zuma has deployed all the ministers and deputy ministers to crisscross the country to assist the youth, showing them what is available for them, uh, where they can participate in terms of furthering their education or their employability. So the ministers and deputy ministers will be having these engagement forums at all localities. So we encourage the youth to participate in those activities. That's where they can see where they can best channel their talents uh, to productive activities of today.
Okay, Minister, just quickly in your capacity as the Minister of Telecommunications, uh, one of the youth's biggest gripe is the cost of data. <laughs> Will we one day see data being um, quite affordable for young people, especially those in rural areas? No, we fully agree with, uh, with you on that statement. Our costs to communicate are still relatively high. Our youth are engaged in social media. We want to make these affordable. As a state, what we are working up towards is that we must create free Wi-Fi hotspots so that they can have some limited free uh, 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 data where they can use for their own communication and improvement. But also we are working with telecoms company to see the ways of uh, increasing their revenues so that they don't lose uh, their competitiveness but at the same time decrease the cost. So that's why the issue of uh, making sure that the telecommunications infrastructure reaches every community, because it's only when everybody is utilizing these gadgets that their revenues will increase, but they must also bring the cost down uh, to be in, in order for us to be globally competitive. Our costs are still relatively high. We're working with the regulator ICASA to find uh, practical ways to decrease the cost. We're working with the telecoms uh, industry, both mobile and fixed, to decrease the cost. So in future, President Zuma has said we must make these available. I think the free Wi-Fi hotspot, this city of Swan, is an exemplary municipality because they've created a lot of free Wi-Fi hotspots within the city, in the parks, in the open areas. That's what we're encouraging other municipalities to do. Thank okay. you. Okay, then. thank you. That was the Minister of Telecommunications, Siabong Akwele, but we were speaking to him in his capacity as the acting uh, Minister of Arts and Culture. I now throw it back to my colleague.